All right, thank you very much, Tess. Good morning, everybody. I'm Pete Morrison. I've been working in the MilSim industry now for about 20 years. Most of that time I've been working on computer games for military training, but I'm not gonna talk about that today. I was going to talk about wargaming, but Tess uh, reminded me that half of you are wargaming experts and I don't wanna show my ignorance. So uh, the best way for me to use, I think the next 10 minutes or so is for me to play the part of the technologist on the panel. And quite simply, I'm going to predict the future. Now, one of the best things about being a technologist is that I get to use, and if I could have my slides, please. I get to use funky AI-generated images, and I'm going to use a lot of them. I'm actually aiming to set the record for the most AI-generated images used in any presentation potentially ever. So strap yourself in. Now, contrary to popular belief, it's very easy to predict the future. The challenge is getting it right. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try and do that today. Now, we've seen some massive upsets in you know, the past decade or so, things that we never expected. We saw that uh, social media, for example, uh, made us all dumber, potentially sowed the seeds for the fall of uh, our civilization. We saw VR gaming basically fail, and uh, this was contrary to what industry wanted. But here in the military simulation world, we've seen a number of step changes that will change the way that we need to simulate warfare going forward. Today, I'm gonna to focus on artificial intelligence. I'm gonna focus on the rapidly evolving nature of drone warfare and the ready availability of terrain data uh, and the ability to rapidly update that data as the situation on the ground changes. So I'm gonna be focusing on these three areas. Now, this is not comprehensive, of course, uh, but as Sam Altman has said, a key to leveling up in life is speaking concisely. So that's what I'm going to aim to do. Now, does anyone in here not know who Sam Altman is? Okay. Wow, well, you're a bunch of nerds. Look at you. A couple of people have been living under a rock. Um, we're going to send you to mandatory AI re-education. And Tess, can you take their names? Now, Sam Altman is the founder of OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT, and he's responsible for much of the hype around AI at the moment. But does it justify the hype? The first thing to understand about generative AI, and this is the step change, generative AI, is that it's not actually doing magic. It is super clever, but these reinforcement learning alg algorithms are not new. What's changed is the availability of massive amounts of computing power and the ability of companies like ChatGPT to employ thousands, if not tens of thousands of humans to train the models. Now for the simulation world, generative AI shows promise, but in the short term, it will be limited to synthesizing large data sets of images and text. Think about reading in doctrine and asking questions of the AI to understand that doctrine better. Summarize this for me, please. Now, in the simulation community, we can imagine all the things very easily that generative AI could do for us, from creating a scenario based upon simple verbal input. Um, I get told all the time that our product is too hard to use. Uh, this could be a way to solve that. Or creating ultra-realistic op for behavior in a tactical training game, right? We can imagine these things. But this is probably very far off because these are very niche use cases and generative AI will continue to evolve as kind of needed by the masses. It's very similar to computer games, right? It seems like a fairly easy lift to take Call of Duty Modern Warfare and apply it to military training. But it, it's actually a really heavy lift. And, and I would know having kind of doing this for 20 years. You can't just pick up a computer game and use it for training. It, it's similar with artificial intelligence. Militaries will need to work together to drive investment in generative AI for military simulation use. And significant investment and innovation will be required. DARPA acknowledged this in their recent AI Forward initiative, stating that despite progress in the field, AI still requires significant investment and advancement to meet the most pressing national security needs. Now, without a doubt, machine learning will dramatically change the nature of war. Drones right now require a human operator and a good signal between the control unit and the platform. Drones will soon be fully autonomous. They'll be smaller, capable of navigation without GPS, 
and they'll be deadly. While NATO forces might have qualms about a machine making a kill or no kill decision, our adversaries will not. The winner may not be the side with the best training or equipment, but that with the ability to churn out the most reliable drones that can find and blow up anything that is human. And the technology has moved very, very quickly. I don't need to say a lot <laughs> to explain this video. What you're seeing here is a swarm of autonomous drones moving through a dense forest. Now, when you're operating in jungle, you have a canopy to protect you from UAVs and satellite reconnaissance, but these things will come and find you and blow you up. And here's a video of just one encounter between a drone and an unfortunate Russian soldier in Ukraine. I know it's a bit grainy, but you can basically see this soldier absolutely terrified trying to outmaneuver a drone that's controlled by a Ukrainian operator. We must very quickly employ simulation to develop tactics to counter this type of threat. Should this soldier be carrying an EMP, like in the Matrix? Should they have a shotgun? I don't know if any of you have gone skeet shooting. <laughs> Maybe everyone needs to carry a shotgun. Or should they have a, a ballistic shield, right? We need answers to these questions and we need them very, very quickly. Ukraine has given us a window into the future of warfare and it, it doesn't look good for the infantry soldier. Arguably it never did. Uh, which is why I was in signals call. <laughs> Finally, we cannot overlook the importance of accurate terrain to underpin both training and operations. Now, terrain data is not as sexy as artificial intelligence or drones, but it's a requirement for both. A drone will match the terrain that it sees through its sensor with the terrain in its memory in order to operate without GPS, right? Really important to understand that. These drones are going to operate independently, they do need no connection to any operator, um, and it's a real, uh, real threat. So already the air and space above Ukraine is filled with platforms taking millions of photos uh, in the air and in space, which are reconstructed into 3D terrain environments at ever increasing resolutions. We have the technology to rapidly take this 3D data and, and rebuild entire theaters in hours with the position of every trench and crater accurately recreated at high resolution. The, these terrain problems have been solved. Now, I remember back in 2005, when I was part of the simulation team to support Australians deploying to Iraq, we had to build the town of Asamoah by hand. It took us six months, six months, recreating points of interest from photographs uh, to enable the training team to conduct mission rehearsal from the airfield to the, the forward operating base, basically convoy, convoy drills. Now, all of this data can be auto-generated and it just gets better every day. Uh, who here has heard of Gaussian splatting? Oh, impressive. <laughs> so Gaussian splatting is one of the new techniques for taking uh, effectively a point cloud uh, generated from video captured by drones or even an iPhone camera and recreating ultra-realistic 3D scenes. And it's applicable both at ground level and, of course, at, at any altitude. And so what we're seeing is this photorealistic 3D data for entire countries is now available for you for mission planning and simulation. And you need to take advantage of this data. Now, the prices are still high, right? But this will come down as the number of supplies increase and you'll start flying your own platforms to collect your own data in theater. But this type of terrain data is simply gonna be mandatory to win in, in future conflicts. So now I'm gonna wrap up with some predictions and, and you can hold me to these. Um, I'm a technologist, you can trust me. Uh, that's if I ever get invited back. Now these predictions, yeah, will definitely come true. So first off, I predict, maybe controversially, that generative AI is going to plateau. Now, that's a controversial take, given all the money that NVIDIA are making right now, for example. But the models will get better. But by this, I mean that they will make less mistakes. They will hallucinate less. They'll be able to accept larger data sets. So we're definitely going to see that to be able to synthesize more data. Generative AI for military use will increase incrementally directly proportional to your investment in it. There's a chance for breakthroughs. I mean, what we all want is the omnipresent AI advisor that sits on the shoulder at every, of every commander at every echelon, right? That's what we need to kind of get to. You can imagine course of action analysis in theater, in real time, uh, and, the, and the force multiplier that that would provide. 
I do believe that we are currently seeing the breakthrough in autonomous drones. Uh, I, I actually suspect it's already happened in the US and China, and we just haven't heard about it. In future, mass production of autonomous drones will be as important as the mass production of ammunition, maybe even more so. So I cannot stress enough how important it is to invest in innovation in AI and drones. This will be a new arms race and it has already started. And finally, a little bit of a tangent, but still important, we will soon see a headset that's acceptable for soldiers to wear in combat. It won't look as dumb as this one. That's the AI's fault, by the way, not mine. But the ability for the soldier in the trench to have a direct feed from the drone that's flying 100 feet above is going to be a massive force multiplier. It will simply make the soldiers more lethal. Right now, the drone operator has to speak to the soldier in the trench by radio, which is good, but not best. Um, so we are gonna see continued investment. IVAS in the US has hit a few roadblocks, but the investment will continue. And I do believe that this is going to happen. And bonus prediction, I predict that AI generated images will continue to be overused in presentations like this one. <laughs> this is what AI thinks I look like. My wife says there's too much hair, I, I agree. And that's the end of my talk. I, I hope uh, you found it interesting. I look forward to debating these topics and you can ask me as many questions as you like. I might take all the questions by the sound of it. And back to you, Tess.